Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for joining me uh, in today's unplug. I got a special unplug for you. Uh, today we're going to be going over five apps uh, that are just my go to apps for anything uh, to create content for social media. So it doesn't matter whether you're a reporter uh, doing news or uh, somebody doing vlogging. These apps will work just the same for whatever uh, scenario uh, you um, uh, care to, uh, you know, embark in. But uh, first of all, before we get started, I just want to uh, let everybody know that I am monitoring your comments. So if you have any questions, uh, comments, feel free to um, uh, write them down below. Uh, also, uh, did anybody see the Apple event today? They unveiled the uh, iPhone 12 and the iPhone 12 Pro, uh, which, uh, um, you know, a huge surprise. Um, I have the uh, iPhone 12 Pro right here. No, just kidding. Uh, I wish. <laughs> no, it looks exactly like the 11 Pro. There's just some redesign that, uh, you know, makes it look a little bit more curved around the edges. Um, but basically, the gist of it was uh, they improved the product as they do every year. So is this, is this something that you want to buy? Um, I don't know. You know, the, the, the price point um, for the iPhone 11 Pro um, the, was uh, around, I believe, 1099 for the 256 gigabytes. So what they're going to do is they're going to keep the same price for the iPhone 12 Pro, uh, which I mean, I love my 11 Pro. It, it for for a vlogger and a, a photographer, it, you know, it's a handy tool, right, in your pocket. And the the latest uh, phones, well, the iPhone 11, uh, the iPhone 12 Pro, um, will be uh, you'll be able to order that, pre-order that um, this Friday, and then it arrives next week. Uh, but again, do you need it or not? If you have the 11 Pro already. 
chances are you don't need it. You can just get away with the 11 Pro. The, uh, I mean, if you really want 5G, because they did add 5G now to the latest phones, uh, then you can go ahead and get that. Or if you don't have the 11 uh, Pro or 11 um, and you want to upgrade, then the 12 Pro uh, would be a great choice for, for the value. And of course, there's other um, uh, models that are cheaper but you know if you're going to be vlogging and, and doing video and photography on the fly why not right just spring for the the um, uh, bigger model <laughs> uh, and all the apps that we're going to go over today are actually going to be enhanced by the new phones um, so uh, yeah great just uh, in the nick of time <laughs> apple's coming out with with uh, new phones. But if you haven't seen uh, the event, um, I believe you can find it on YouTube as well as the um, Apple's uh, store uh, website. Um, but uh, yeah, if you did see it, let me know what you think. And if you're going to see it and you're watching this replay, we're live right now, but if you're watching this uh, in replay, uh, you know, list, list uh, your comments in uh, uh, the comment section below. I'd love to hear what uh, you thought about that event. All right, so uh, let's get started with um, uh, the one. No, I would say the number one app that I use every single time. Uh, I, I I try to do more photography, or actually, I love doing a little bit more photography than video. Uh, and for my uh, Instagram, I usually take photos of food because I just love eating you know who doesn't but um uh i usually like to make my pictures pop a little bit more especially with food you know you see some of these pictures and video or clips uh on tv and they and they make the food that dish looks so good that you just want to go and eat that um so i like to just give my my pictures uh especially food pictures a little bit more hump to them uh so for this i actually use a uh, snapseed uh which is available for ios uh, and android so all of the links the download links to um the apps that we're going to be going over today are in the description below if they're not i'll put them there if you're using this app and if you've used any of the apps that we're going to go over today, uh, you know, feel free to comment. I'd like to, I would love to hear what you have to say about them and what you think and how you use them. Uh, so put that in the comments. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions, again, feel free to, to ask me. Now, this app is actually owned by uh, Google. So it's, uh, it's highly rated. And like I said, it's my go-to um, uh, app for um, making my pictures pop. So uh, let's get started. Let's go to the Snapseed demo. Now I love this app because it's not just easy to use, but it's packed with a ton of features and it's free. So when you first open up Snapseed, you'll see this big plus sign uh, in the middle of your screen. Tap on it and it'll allow you to bring in an image that you wanna edit. So I'll select this one. Now, this is a pretty good looking photo already, but usually I like to make my pictures pop a little bit more, especially if they're food, food pictures. So what I'm going to do is bypass all the presets, which you do get if you look at the right side of the screen. Uh, now, I am holding my phone horizontally, but if you hold it vertically, these tools are going to be at the bottom of your screen. So I'm going to click that little pencil icon on the right and all of these are the filters and effects that you can add and modify um and and just insert to your image uh any way you want now i haven't used all of them but uh, they are there for your convenience i like to keep things simple so i'm going to choose a tune image at the top and if you uh swipe up and down or slide up and down you can select whatever element of that photo you want to modify and then you can swipe left and right to um, tell the app how much of that filter or effect you want to add or apply to the photograph so i uh, let's start with the brightness so i'm gonna choose brightness there i'm gonna add a little bit uh let's, usually i leave contrast alone but you can play around with that if you want i'm gonna make the colors pop a little bit more so i'm gonna bring up the saturation uh, not too much that it's gonna look cartoonish though so i'm gonna go with ambience now 
bring that up a little bit more. Highlights, sure, let's bump those up a little bit. Shadows, sure, why not? Now, the warmth um, uh, option, I, you know, I typically don't use either unless if you get a, a really bluish looking photo or image, you can use the warmth um, setting or option to um, uh, get rid of that blueness. And if you get an image that's a little too hot, as we say, or a little too orange looking, you can use the warm the warmth function to um, make it look less orange. So it's a really cool cool tool to have there. Um, additionally, there's a tool where you can select white balance. Um, all right, so I like that. Now, if you tap and hold on the screen, you, it reveals the original image prior to adding all of those filters or effects. And of course, if you let go, then you'll see the difference. It's like a good before and after comparison. So if you're happy with those effects, um, you can tap the uh, check mark icon at the bottom. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna add another filter here, another effect, uh, just to make it look a little bit more professional. Uh, so I'm gonna click on the pencil icon again. I'm gonna go down to the lens blur. And I love the lens blur because it, it creates that bokeh look that you would get with a professional camera. Um, I do love uh, the vignette look where it just darkens the edges, but I want them a little bit darker. So just like in the last uh, effect, I'm gonna uh, swipe up and down and select the vignette strength, and then go right to apply a little bit more and look at that. Um, so you can see the image, the edges of the image are being, uh, or getting a little darker there, but I don't want them that dark. So maybe right there is fine. So vignette strength of plus 33. And uh, it, depending on how heavy you want your blur to look, you can select the blur, sh blur strength and um, you know go left or right. So I'm just gonna go just a tad to the right. So again, blur strength plus 33. I like that. And uh, when I'm ready, I can tap the check mark button, but I wanna show you something. So at the, uh, down at the bottom, there's a little circle within a circle looking icon. So when you tap on that, it actually moves or changes your blur effect to linear. That basically allows you to apply this bokeh look uh, to um, uh, any part of the screen that you want. Uh, it's not it's not a circular effect at this point. Uh, so if you wanna uh, blur the top and the bottom or any of the edges because you can actually spin the axis of the effect by uh, using two fingers on the screen and then moving them up and down and it just creates a, um, a cool looking blur effect for example, just like that, where I'm having the middle of the screen in focus and all the edges outward out of focus. But I do like the circular blur. So I'm gonna go back to it. I'm gonna tap the little square icon at the bottom and it just goes to elliptical now. So uh, that's a lot of blurredness for me. So I'm actually gonna bring it down. So let's go back to 33 plus 33. I'm gonna check that my vignette strength is also plus 33, so there it is, so I like that. And I'm gonna click the check icon at the bottom. Uh, now this is really all I do, but uh, let's just say you wanna modify your image or a little bit more using the effects you already have, or you just wanna flat out delete one of the effects you've already applied. Well, it's easy to use. There's a little icon at the top with a, um, curved arrow to the left. You're gonna tap on that, go to view edits, and then you just tap on the um, effect uh, that uh, you want to uh, modify or delete. I'm gonna ch change the lens blur a little bit more. So if you want to delete the effect, you can just tap the trash bin icon. It'll get the job done. If you wanna modify it, uh, then you can actually tap on the edit icon, which is three lines. 
and it takes you to the modification page again or the editing page. And then uh, just like before, you can uh, swipe up and down and then go to the right or left to apply your filters. And when you're happy with the modification you've done, just click the check mark at the bottom. Now, the cool thing about that little icon in the beginning, uh, in the middle, sorry, that, that looks like a little paintbrush is it allows you to actually select images or parts of the image uh, that you want to apply the effect to. It's kind of neat. Um, now, with the lens blur, uh, it might not be that noticeable, but uh, you can play around with that. But normally, uh, you would select, um, let's see, maybe if I swipe. Yeah, so there we go. This is applying, let's just say I want that blurred, that area. So just, uh, now it's actually blurred. Now, if I want to blur the rest of the image and just leave that in focus, then there is that icon at the top that reverts your image. And um, actually said the icon at the top. It's actually the icon at the bottom. Um, that looks like a little uh, pyramid with a cir circle in it. So now the image there is uh, the image that's not covered in the red area is actually in focus and everything covered in red is out of focus. Now, if I tap that icon one more time, it reverts it back to to having the uh, red area blurred while the rest of the image is in focus. You know, again, I don't want to actually apply this uh, image uh, effect. So I'm going to click the X icon. But if you were happy with um, this, then you just click the check icon uh, at the bottom um, right hand side. So I'm going to click, I'm going to X out of this. And I really like this image now. Um, so I'm going to actually click the back arrow at the top left hand corner there. And I want to save this image. So just tap the sharing icon. Now, if you want to share it from this app straight into a digital or a social media platform, you can select the share icon there at the top. It's a, um, uh, uh, that'll allow you to share it not just to a social media platform, but also to somebody else uh, via uh, messages uh, or email it to somebody. Uh, you can additionally open it in another application by selecting the open in function. Uh, the save option allows you to uh, to save um, the image uh, that's already living in your smart device or stored in your smart device uh, with all the filters and effects applied to it. Um, now, if you are editing an image that's in the cloud, hitting that save button will create a duplicate image uh, and store it in natively in your device with the effects and the filters applied to it. Uh, if you want to just save a copy, you can do that as well. And uh, that uh, will retain the original without the effects. Now, if you want to make your effects permanent, you can export the image. But since this is non-destructive editing, uh, I like to just save it because if I ever want to come back to to Snapseed and um, remove completely remove all the effects that I applied to an image and revert it back to origin or the original. I can easily do that. So I'm just going to click save, and I uh, am going to select modify. And that saves the image with all the fil filters and modifications I just made. Um, to my camera roll. And then from there, it gives me the flexibility to do whatever I want with it, whether I want to share it to social media or send it to somebody, email out, email it out, whatever I want to do, I can do that. Um, in this case, I really like this uh, picture. <laughs> so I think I'm going to share it to my Instagram. But feel free to uh, use this app to make the image your own any way you want. It's a uh, an amazing tool that's in your pocket. All right, and did I mention that it's free? Yes, free. Uh, it's it's a very powerful app uh, for a great price. Um, so I that's my go-to, number one go-to app. I use it all the time when I'm posting to Instagram, when I'm posting food pictures. Sometimes I don't uh, you know, do anything to the photo uh, if uh, if it's uh, the scene of something, but um, 
And in any case, it's a, it's a, um, a, an app that offers a variety of tools for any occasion. So you just have to play around with it. Obviously, I didn't cover all of the features and fun functions of that app, but uh, trust me, it's, it's, it's amazing. So it's my number one recommended app for editing your photos on the fly. And the great thing is, um, if I didn't mention it enough, the preset uh, function that the app offers allows you to import an image um, later on, and then uh, you can quickly apply the same uh, filters and settings uh, as your previous image. So it just speeds up the process. So you don't have to you know, add uh, the same filters over and over again if you have like 10 photos to uh, you know, apply the filter to. All right, moving on, number two. Uh, I love this app uh, because uh, if you're on the move, uh, you can just simply take out your phone, uh, grab a shot and then put it away. And then later on, later in the day, you can take it out again, grab the app and, uh, and then get another shot. Um, it's, uh, it'll definitely elevate uh, your uh, Instagram content and your social media content. Um, and again, you know, whether you're a vlogger or whether you're a journalist, an MMJ, this will benefit you great, greatly. It'll make your product pop. Uh, Spark camera. Um, and um, uh, it is available only for iOS devices, unfortunately. Uh, so if you're not an iPhone user, maybe it's time to get an iPhone. Uh, anyway, the download description, uh, the download link is in the description, but let's get to the demo. Again, this is Spark Camera. The Spark Camera app has become one of my go-to vlogging apps because it's easy to use, it's elegant, and uh, yeah, I just love the ability to stitch all of my individual clips together to create one longer clip and then upload that to social media. So when I open up the app, I'm gonna click that big red button. So this takes me to the main dashboard. And mind you that I am using the Spark Pro version of the app. The app is free to download and use, but depending on your needs, there are different tiers that you can climb up with its membership. Um, it can range from about $7 all the way up to about $40 or $60. Um, but, um, you know, it's worth it. And I'll show you why in a moment. But it's really easy to use. If I tap the A icon um, down at the bottom, it, it brings up options that allow me to... to um, uh, modify um, 4k I do like the 4k option so I can do that but if I want to go down a little bit more just to conserve let's say storage of my device I can change that to 1080p so I can go kind of back and forth just by simply tapping on it uh, 30 frames per second I kind of like 60 frames per second but let's see what other options we get Ooh, 120 140 and the film look here's the cinema look 24 frames per second all right so i'm going to stick with 60 frames per second if i want the flash on i can turn that on most of the time i don't <laughs> stabilize uh i do like the stabilization it just creates a smoother look for my video um and I can actually, if I click the icon up at the top right hand corner, I can actually go into a selfie mode, which this gives you the ability to do a selfie mode um, by tapping that little icon you see um, near the bottom of the screen. It looks like a little tiny remote control with a little circle in there. Um, and then you can you can actually create a little bubble where the camera, the selfie camera is showing you and at the same time you are recording whatever is in front of you. So in this case, I'm just going to leave it like this. So I'm going to tap that A icon at the bottom just to get to get out of that. Uh, now you get you get this big circle there and um, you do get a time code. Uh, so you, you get the ability to, to see how long your shot is, which is really helpful. Usually for my shots, I, I tend to stick at no more than two seconds per shot. And I'll show you why right now, but I'm going to get a shot right here. I'll just do this. I can tap anywhere on the screen and I can get um, the recording uh, to, to um, activate. So I'm going to tap and hold 
two seconds. I'm going to select my next shot. So this is a little closer shot here. Another two seconds. Okay, I'm going to get this plaque over here. Two seconds. Get a little closer. Two seconds. Uh, now, there you if you can't physically get closer, you can uh, swipe up and down as you're recording to zoom in and out. So I'm going to do one more shot here. And this, th this time I'm actually going to zoom in as I'm recording. So I'm going to tap and hold anyone on the screen. Now, it's not as smooth as uh, you would th think, but it does get the job done. There we go. Now, that shot was a little longer than normal, so I might shorten it or I might just uh, get rid of it altogether. Okay, now let's just say this is this is all the shots that I want. It's about 21 seconds right now. On If I want to upload this as my Instagram stories, it's going to be about 15 seconds. That, that I kind of just want it uh, as far as the length goes, but 21 seconds is still all right. So we'll see what we can do. I'm gonna actually have to edit a little bit of this anyway. So I'm gonna X out of it at the top. So I'm gonna go back in there, tap it on the circle. And now I get these edit options at the bottom of my screen. So let's go one by one and see what that they, they do. By the way, it's gonna start automatically playing here. So um, you know, if you need to stop it for any reason, uh, you can do that by um, selecting the cutting tool down at the bottom and then and then uh, brings up all of your clips and you can just select whichever clip you want to modify first or delete so let's tap on the first clip now this was two seconds so you can actually play it um, well you know what it plays automatically but if you select and drag one of these circles it'll either shorten your, your clip or it'll just trim it. So I did get two seconds out of it. So I, I'm pretty happy with that. So we can go to my next shot by going back to that um, editing interface or dashboard or by simply uh, swiping left and right, depending on where I am. There we go. So this is my next clip. And I like that too, because it's two seconds, but I kind of want to add a transition too, at some point, not necessarily between these two shots, because it's the same subject, but maybe right here. So if I want to add a transition, um, I tap that little circle right there, the, the, uh, the black uh, and white circle, and uh, I can add any transition um, that I want from these uh, menu. I mean, you can see it's a, it's a long menu here. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, zoom out. Let's see what that does. Okay. Now, um, here, two, it's two seconds. So I like that. It's two seconds right here. And I can actually add another transition there. So let's do motion down. The motion down and motion up is actually kind of cool. Um, this was a little longer of a shot that I would have liked. So let's do... Let's actually shorten that a little bit more. There we go. So maybe like start. We'll just we'll just start it right there. Bam. There we go. There we go. We'll just start from there. Well, maybe a little bit more. There we go. From there. And then shorten the back end of that clip to right about there. And if I'm perfectly happy with that, well, actually, you see my time code at the bottom tells me it's 15.3 seconds. So that's uh, that's pretty interesting. So let's just shave uh, 0.3 seconds out of this. So it's a perfect 15 seconds. Bam. We'll do it from the front end. And there we go. Uh, if I want to slow down my uh, image or my video, uh, I, I can do that through here. There's uh, plenty of options for you to experiment with. 
Um, now, what I'm going to do... Oh, also you can uh, lower the volume of a particular clip here. Um, so I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to basically mute all of my clips. Uh, I'm going to X out of it at the top. And now we'll see what it looks like. But first, I want to show you one thing. You know what? Let's tap this little magic wand at the bottom. Yep. You can add different special effects if you want. So that's kind of cool. Um, I'm going to do the VHS look. Uh, that's interesting for any of you that remember how what a VHS cassette is or a VHS player. Uh, this is surely... Uh, a cool way to bring back some memories all right so there we go now all of my clips have been stitched together but uh you know i kind of like music especially in clips like this that i muted my audio for um now what i can do here let's go to the next set of tools here so this is your overall volume level you can actually do a voiceover record, but I'm going to tap the little musical note at the bottom. That's going to bring up a, um, a wide variety of options for you to import some music in there, whether it's from your iTunes music or your files. Uh, I typically just select one of the other ones that are included with uh, this pro version of the app. Travel vlog, fitness beats, training, uh, holiday. Ooh, let's check the holiday season. Let's see what this does. Okay, so that that's playing a little bit of Christmas music. Kind of goes with my uh, snow globe here. So I'm gonna select that by using the use button. Uh, I'm gonna X out of it. And um, what I'm going to do now is X out of this. So now I have my self-contained project there. Now the other thing is I can share it. If I want to share it out now, I'll just go to it. There's a download button at the very top right-hand corner. So that actually allows me to download the clip uh, directly to my camera roll, which I really do appreciate because it gives me the flexibility to then share it out um, to any of the social media platforms that I want or email to the, the, the video to somebody uh, or text it to somebody. Um, so it's, it's a very nice feature and, and uh, uh, Spark Camera did introduce an iCloud function or feature that allows you to actually upload your videos to the cloud and then uh, you know do what you want with their with with it from there. Um, in this case, I, I just don't use that um, function. I, I love just sharing all my stuff to my camera roll. But once it finishes saving, you can actually uh, upload it to your Instagram directly, your YouTube, or if you select the share icon here, uh, I can select save video or any of the other options to send it to any individuals I want. I'm going to X out of this. And now it's going to actually play the video. I don't know if you can actually hear the little music that's playing. I have it playing through my speakers right now, but if not, it's totally cool. Just trust me, there's music playing right now uh, through this video. So it's very, very easy to use. It has some really cool special effects. Um, or if you just want to create your own on the fly, you can. Uh, there's different things you can do with your phone that um, allow you to uh, have really cool looking clips. So I'm going to X out of it. I'm actually going to show you some of the other projects that I have done. Um, again, uh, you know, you, you might want to delete some of this stuff after you've done using it just because uh, it does take some storage out of your device there. But I'm going to show you a, a piece here that I did. So you can see the selfie camera is active so that's me and then um running the cart at the uh nascar races in fontana and uh during the uh ride i got 
different clips of the ride itself and uh, stitch them together here. I didn't add music here at all. I just wanted a quick, uh, almost like a time lapse video, but um, slightly better. <laughs> So uh, I stitched the shots together and then uploaded everything to uh, my social media platforms. And that's that. Uh, here's a more, this is a, a tea room that I visited recently in Hollywood. And it um, I, I did add some music to it. So I'm going to see if I can actually uh, play the music in a way that you can hear it. All right, here we go. And there you go. All right, uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, but the cool thing too about um, this app is that you can record uh, using the native uh, devices camera app, and then you can just upload that footage uh, to the app later. So you don't necessarily have to shoot it uh, within the app. I just like to do it within the app because it, it kind of stores it for me there. And then I can just pick up the app, and then get my next shot uh, until I build a series of shots and create a montage out of it uh, and then share that out to uh, social media. Um, all right, so Claire uh, has a question here. Uh, how do you learn about new apps that help create content? Uh, so that's a, a good question. Um, you know, there's, there's a ton of apps out there. Uh, and what I like to do is do just a little bit of research. That's that's really um, all that you need. You um, can uh, start with something. So if you want to do something specific, for example, um, best teleprompter apps for iPad then you just simply Google that and then you'll pr most likely get a, a several lists from different websites of, of apps that they think are good. And then from there, you can download the app um, and, and test it out. Uh, some of these apps offer a free trial and then they're paid or they're, they're free, but then they have uh, either ads or a watermark or something like that. But you don't necessarily know all of this until you actually download the app and test it out. Um, you can always delete it later too if you want. I mean, I, I, I must have downloaded probably like four other apps to help me either edit or shoot video on the fly um, without necessarily spending a lot of money. Uh, like in the case of Snapseed, it was, it was free. So I thought I'd try that out. But some of the other apps that I had downloaded previously just didn't really quite do the job for, for me or the job that I, that I really wanted. Uh, there's other uh, creator apps out there that obviously I, I, I'm not covering here today because even though they're cool and I do use them, I do use them now every now and then, not all the time. The apps I'm covering today are, is, is uh, something that I... Uh, have in my tool belt that I use all the time. Um, but that's that's really what it takes just for you to actually do a little bit of research, but first think about what you want your end goal to be and then do a quick uh, Google search and uh, from there experiment. That's the that's the key, I think, to to understanding some of these apps uh, and what works for you, because these apps may not necessarily work for you in the way that you want them to. You may have other apps that work best for you. Uh, but the key thing is to experiment with the apps and figure out what's best for you. Um, all right. So um, the third app that I love to use is called Filmic Pro. And you probably heard of this app um, uh, millions of times. Uh, it, it's available both for iOS and Android, believe it or not. And it does cost 
some money, but it's not a lot for what it does, in my opinion. So uh, at the, uh, as of the time of this uh, live stream, the app is fifteen dollars one five, and um, you know I'm 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 gonna barely scratch the surface here in the, in this demo. Uh, so if you want to learn all there is about Filmic Pro, you're more than welcome to visit their website, and I um, added that link uh, in the description. Uh, but yeah, let's let's get started. Um, I want to show you the Filmic Pro demo. I love Filmic Pro because it contains a ton of features that, you know, I haven't used all of them, but uh, I've used the basic ones that help me just shoot better video on the fly. The cool thing about this app is that no matter um, what you do with it, it gives you the ability to control all of your uh, smartphones or iPhones um, cameras. Uh, so that's the great thing about this. Uh, so. Um, you know, first of all here, I'm going to actually go to the gear icon at the bottom. That's my settings. And that way I can change the resolution, frame rate, audio, etc. Uh, I'm going to choose resolution first. Uh, so right now it's at 2K. I like it at 2K just because it gives me a little extra room to zoom in without too much distortion in post-production. Now you can also change your aspect ratio at the top. Um, you know, I... I tend to go for 16 by 9 but if I were to just do a let's say a video just for my Instagram feed then I would just probably go with the one by one uh, aspect ratio and um, uh, as far as frame rate goes uh, it depends on your preference if you want that cinema look you'll select 24 frames per second uh, if you want more uh, true to life then 60 frames per second is for you. Additionally, you can select the time lapse option um, tab that you find right there on the right side. For this, I will select 24 frames per second. I like that cinema look, even though I do love 60 frames per second. Um, but with 60 frames per second, there is one icon that I don't get that might be really important to you. So for example, uh, if I select 60, if you look near the bottom left-hand corner, you see that I only get two icons, one that has like an um, overlapping circles, uh, colored circles, um, and, uh, and another little icon right next to that. But if I choose 24 frames per second, I get a third icon. And that third icon is actually going to allow me to uh, get my zebra stripes if I need more help or aid during my, my shot here. Okay, so I'm going to select with uh, 20, I'm going to stick with four, 24 frames per second. As far as audio goes, audio, if, if you have an external microphone, you can actually select it here. If you don't, that's totally fine. Right now, I have it set to my... Um, built-in um, iPhone mic. Now the audio is a little too hot right now. You can you know, one of the other reasons why I love this app is that you can monitor your audio on the fly. You get an, a nice audio meter. So it's a little too hot right now. But uh, after we get out of the settings, I'll show you how to actually bring down the volume. All right. So um, the other thing too is uh, if you want to change your camera uh, you can select the or tap the camera icon and then depending on your iPhone and and, and um, model you have uh, it's going to select uh, or give you different options here I, I do have the 11 Pro so um, I can go ultra wide or telephoto um, or just the, the standard wide uh, I can also select the selfie um, mode and the double take button you see there that's um a feature that you saw um at an apple event about a year ago i believe and it just allows you to record multiple uh cameras all at once however that is a different app that you have to download from filmic pro the filmic pro people uh so you if you download that app and you tap on the double take right here it'll just take you to that app um so i'm going to stick with my wide lens and if you're happy with your settings, I do suggest saving the preset. So the next time you come into the app, uh, it's less work you have to do. Just go and select your preset and you're ready to go. So uh, to save this preset, just select the presets icon. 
or tile. Uh, scroll all the way to the bottom until you get to save current setting, uh, save current settings as preset, and just title your preset and you're good to go. As you can see, I have a variety of presets there uh, saved up already. Um, okay, so I can just tap the screen anywhere I want and it'll get me out of those uh, settings. Um, okay, now I wanna lower my volume now on my recording microphone. So if you look at my time code at the bottom, there's a tiny little white stripe. Just uh, do your best to use your finger to tap uh, and hold and then just drag to wherever you want the audio level level to be. I think I'm just gonna do 50%, so I'll just leave it there. Um, but for now, but normally you wanna be hitting around negative 12 decibels anyway, so you just uh, move it until, move it uh, left or right until you uh, get that to the spot that you want it to. Now the markers that you see there on screen, there's a, a square shaped marker and a circle marker. The circle marker is, uh, allows you to control your uh, iris or your brightness. Um, and the uh, square marker allows you to control your focus. And this is on the fly. So all you have to do basically is just drag those markers to wherever you want on the screen. So there's my focus. Now I can actually lock that so that um, no matter what I do, that focus remains um, there and doesn't automatically try to focus on the nearest item. Um, but in this case, I kind of want my foreground to be in focus. So I just drag that marker over. Now, I, if, if, if the marker turns red, that means it's locked. If you want to modify that, just tap on it and it turns white again. Um, for my iris, I kind of actually like that shot, but let's see what we get if I drag it elsewhere on the screen. Okay, guess it's a little bright right now, but um, if you want to further modify these markers, you can just tap and hold on one of them here, um, and then you can adjust the brightness of your screen. Um, you can do the same thing with the focus, but with the focus actually gives you um, an option to zoom also. You just have to tap the zoom, and you can do a slow zoom in or a slow zoom out if you want. There's a couple markers that you can add, and it creates almost like a, a dolly. Um, so for example here, here's my um, focus ring, and I can manually adjust the focus on the fly. But you see there's two stripes right there, one at the top and one at the bottom between my, my uh, marker here, or playhead. So um, those you can actually adjust. You just select a spot all along your uh, ring there and tap on that spot. And it just moves the, the markers there. Uh, and then if you go, let's say, I want to start right here. Uh, I'm going to tap that marker at the very top and the phone or the app will do um, an, an automated slow focus without me having to intervene intervene at all uh and and it just creates a really nice look if you want to do a quick little rack focus for example so it looks nice you know if you um want to do a look like that now if you want to bring up your zebra stripes just select the uh, a looking icon at the bottom of your screen bottom left and um, here are my zebra stripes. I just have to figure out. Let's see. I'm gonna. I'm gonna brighten the screen up a little bit more. And now you see the zebra stripes there. Uh, the blue just means that it's under um, performing, so it's it's darker than it should be. So you don't really want to get the blue. You want to get more of the whiteness of the zebra stripes, but not too much. Like, that's way too much. That's that My shot is overblown at that point, but you kind of just want it to be softly and gently covering the screen there. Uh, I can actually also do this same process for focus. So I'll just switch to my focus. Option is up at the top. And anything I see in green, that means uh, that, the, well, the more green I see concentrated on one spot, the the better it is in focus. So um, actually, let me take control of my focus here. So you can see right now that plaque in the back is all in focus because it's super bright green. But the more I get out of it, the more 
out of focus everything becomes. So I want to kind of hit that green where, where, where I really want my focus. So in this case, my foreground object is important to me. So I want to get it into the green as much as possible. So that tells me that um, my foreground is in focus because it's green. Everything else that's kind of black uh, and white is um, not in focus. Uh, if I don't want that distraction, I can always just tap the um, back the A icon up down here at the bottom. And now I have my shot all in color the way I had it before. And I'm actually good to go to start um, getting a quick little video. The cool thing about this too is that not only does it give you a time code, but it gives you the battery life of your device as well as how much uh, space you have. In this case, I'm almost running out of space here. Um, my device is almost full, so I have to go back and delete some videos. So you always make sure that you have plenty of space in your device if you're going to record straight to it. Uh, once I'm ready to record, there is a button. Um, it's a circle button. The bottom right hand corner next to my play icon and I select that it's going to turn red and it's going to start recording my image. Now I can stop it and depending on the options or settings that I set the app to in this case my recorded video is going to go straight to my camera roll but you can actually keep the video in app. You do that by going to your settings and let's see if I remember how to do this. Hardware, perhaps. Oh, also, if you want to use your phone to go live, do a live stream, there is a way to uh, have it uh, give you a clean HDMI out. So that's uh, that's really cool. Um, let me see. I device, maybe. Yeah, there we go. So you click on device and you save it to the camera roll. You have some additional options here as well. Uh, that I, you know, all these options I have not tried actually. But in any case, if you um, activate your save to camera roll option, everything you record here, all your shots will be sent straight to your camera roll. And that way, in my in my case, what I do is I just uh, airdrop it to my iPad Pro and use my iPad Pro to edit that video if I need to. Otherwise, um, I can share it straight to uh, my social media platforms. And it's really that simple. Again, you know, uh, once you save your presets, all you have to go, all you have to do when you come back uh, into the app is go to your presets, select the one you want. And there we go. And now if I want to modify my brightness or my focus, I can just do that on the fly. Lock those and I'm ready to go. Bam, I shoot my record button. It's that easy. The app does cost a little bit of money. Uh, it's about uh, $15, but it is well worth it. Trust me. Uh, I just love this. There is also other paid um, options that you can that you can buy. So if you need more tools, there's a cinematographer's kit you can buy within the app. Um, so that's kind of cool, but I haven't bought it because I have not had the need to. But that's uh, um, some, if that's something that interests you, you can go ahead and explore with that as well. But this is the Filmic Pro app. And uh, again, I just love the, the flexibility it gives me and uh, how it just unlocks the full potential of my iPhone. And, you know, this is a, just a great uh, tool for uh, MMJs, uh, multimedia journalists. Uh, we have them all over the, the country, and uh, this app just makes it easy for them to use the phone. In fact, you know what? I, I uh, shot a, a, an entire news piece uh, for digital only. Uh, using just my iPhone and I had an external microphone hooked up and, and uh, uh, a special cable uh, that allowed me to connect a, a XLR microphone directly to my uh, uh, iPhone and uh, I just used the Filmic Pro app, recorded the whole thing, um, sent all the video over, or dropped it over to me, uh, my um, uh, iPad Pro and uh, edited all there and it was just uh, really nice being very mobile. I, I did some work recently too uh, in Santa Barbara, my hometown, uh, where I used that app to um, um, uh, shoot all my content and uh, 
uh, iPad Pro to edit it. Uh, and then I do want to I do want to clarify uh, something real quick, um, and um, that is that um, the uh, uh, the Pro well the the Filmic Pro app um, <laughs> is. Uh, um, uh, you know, I, I I didn't cover every little detail on it, but it's very robust. So like I said earlier, if you want to learn more uh, on uh, this specific app, um, there's uh, uh, Filmic Pro has their own website and they do have, uh, in addition to the Double Take app, they do have uh, another app uh, called First Light. And I believe that's a photo editing app and um, I don't use it. But you might uh, check that out as well um, and, and see if that's of any value uh, to you. But um, again, the, the, the link to their website is in the uh, description below. All right. Uh, app number four. Uh, it's called Canva. Uh, you probably heard of it, too. It's a, a very popular app. Uh, I'm using the free version, uh, as I'm going to say in the video. Uh, Canva Pro costs uh, $9.95 per month or uh, $119.40 per year. So it's supposed to save you a little bit over 20%. Um, rather than going a month, you can go uh, uh, per year. And the Pro version comes with uh, 100 gigabytes uh, worth of storage space versus the one gigabyte uh, storage space that you get uh, if you have the um, basic... Uh, free uh, version of the app. Uh, so if you know that you're going to use it a lot, um, Canva Pro may be the way to go uh, for you. Um, it is available for both iOS and, and Android, and you can also uh, create the um, content that you're going to be seeing in the demo uh, through uh, the, the uh, web browser. Um, all right. Well, let's get to the demo. Uh, the demo again. This is Canva. Now I love this app because it's not just easy to use, but it's packed with a ton of features, and it's free. So when you first open up Snapseed, you'll see this big plus sign uh, in the middle. Uh, that was the wrong video. So let me actually fix that up real quick. Uh, now, uh, Claire does ask another question. Who are you influenced by on social media? Um, that's, a, that's a really uh, good question because I, I really do have a lot of um, uh, influencers. Uh, a lot of them are uh, journalists, of course, um, but um, uh, for... Um, I mean, there's there's other folks that that are techie too. Like I, I just love uh, I love using um, tech um, technology and and tech gadgets and everything. So for me, that um, uh, that that really influences uh, who I follow on social media and of course who I um, uh, I choose to to draw knowledge from. Uh, there's also a ton of YouTube videos that that I watch, as, as my wife knows. Uh, there's uh, uh, plenty plenty of videos that I uh, love to learn from, and and um, uh, yeah, I mean that's that's really um, who I'm influenced by on media. There's there's really no one in particular. I just um, I, I love the, the plethora of options that are out there. So I just, again, you know, it, it all comes down to doing a little bit of research. And, and through that research, you know, I, I get into communities that are um, uh, savvy on uh, technology. Uh, and, um, and then from there, I just kind of go. Uh, and uh, some of these folks I've had as my guests in the past, uh, for another webcast that I was doing during the uh, pandemic, um, which you can actually watch 
uh, on my YouTube channel. You can just go back and uh, I do have, it's, I call it the, the um, uh, uh, what did I call it? <laughs> Co the, the quarantine vlog. Yeah, there we go. Uh, the quarantine vlog. So um, yeah, that's, um, uh, that's the answer to that question. All right, so let's see if this is actually working now. So let's go to the Canva demo. Canva is free to use, but it does offer paid upgrades that allow you to use uh, professional stock images to um, create a good look for your project. Now, in this case, I uh, use the free version and I usually use the app to create uh, graphics. Uh, and illustrations for social media. So in this case, I'm gonna select the Instagram post. By the way, this is the screen you see when you first open up the app. Um, I'm gonna select Instagram post. And uh, you have a set of templates you can choose from and the list is long. Uh, this is a good um, way to kind of give you a starting point, but of course you can always create your own if you want. If you wanna create your own, just choose blank at the top. Now, I want to select a good template here. So maybe let's do, ooh, I like that swag giveaway. So let's select that. Okay, now here uh, I can actually modify the image any way I want to. So, uh, you know, I don't want that uh, image with the shoes, obviously. I want to use one of my own images. So I can tap on that and I can select my image and then um, I can double tap uh, the text and I can change it to whatever I want. So let's do that. Let's just put test my swag. Uh, if you tap on the text, it gives you some options that you can select, such as the font, the color, which I'm actually going to use yellow. So I'm going to tap on the yellow. Just use my slider there. There we go. And then I'm going to hit done at the bottom. I don't really like this bottom text there. So I'm going to tap on that and then I can delete it by ch uh, clicking the um, trash icon or the little trash bin icon at the top. All right, there we go. Now the get on it, I can actually change. So maybe let's do food is great. And actually I wanna change test my swag to something else. Let's do just the name of the dish, chilaquiles. There we go. And I can drag it up and down if I want to move the text. So I'm going to actually put it in the dark there. Now, I don't like that black and white. It looks really cool for some pictures, but this is a food image. So what I want to do is I'm going to find the image. Um, I'm going to tap on it and select maybe colors. Maybe it's in there. Filters. There we go. Click normal. And uh, I can actually go to advance and I can uh, modify the image even further. But uh, I really like the look of this image. So I'm gonna just tap out of it. And I like everything else. Now, if I really wanted to add more text or wanted to add another photo, I would click, uh, first of all, I would click outside of this. And I would click the plus sign at the bottom and you can add text, another image, uh, video, illustrations, and shapes. Again, some of them are free. Some of them you have to pay, uh, especially for the premium illustrations or images. Uh, so let's uh, actually, you know, I like the icons that uh, are the little illustrations on the corners there. But we'll, we'll see what happens if I try exporting it, depending. It might be a premium um, image or not. So we'll see. But I just, I, I like this. Okay, so I will then export it by clicking the share icon at the top right-hand corner. And I would choose save image. 
not now. You have saved your design. Perfect. I'm going to go to my home page, but this, these are some of the uh, previous projects uh, that I have put together together using Canva. Okay. So perfect. So now that's my screen. I can then go to my camera roll and there it is. Bam. My image. I can share this illustration on social media any way I want to. Uh, and, and in this case, it's uh, meant for uh, Instagram so I can share it there. So this is just quick and easy. It's just a, a great application that you can use for anything that you want to. Okay, so I'm getting super hungry <laughs> just watching that. Uh, again, that was Canva. Uh, it, it's uh, 9.95 per month or $119.40 per year. Uh, if you're going to go with that option. Uh, again, I'm using the free version, uh, but you might find that uh, Canva Pro might be um, good for you. Uh, and it's a, a great way to create graphics uh, just to make your content pop even more on social uh, media. Uh, all right. Well, uh, why don't we just get uh, straight to the uh, fifth and final app that I use. Uh, and uh, I'm hoping that this time uh, we get to the right video and there's no wires crossed. Um, but Clipomatic uh, is uh, an app that, you know, I don't know if many people know about it or not. Um, the way that I discovered it was actually by watching uh, AOC uh, do her um, Instagram uh, vid uh, story videos. And I always saw these, the, these captions and I always wondered, well, I mean, that would take a long time to add those captions in post-production. So how is she doing it? And then later she revealed that she was actually using Clipomatic. And so I thought, okay, well, uh, let me download it and let me, let me experiment with it. Now, the, the thing with this app is that it's not free to download. It does cost uh, uh, $4.99. Uh, for the app. And if you're going to do more videos, standalone videos, vlogging style, uh, you know, it's, a, it's really important to have those captions uh, now uh, when uploading to social media. Uh, you know, it's been found that uh, um, a lot of people uh, tend to watch videos in silence. And so captions work uh, a ton because sometimes you might not be in the, the right uh, scenario or the right place to uh, pump that volume up. And uh, you just want to check a quick clip on somebody's story. Uh, so it helps if you have captions for, for sure. Um, uh, and uh, Clipomatic, uh, unfortunately, is only available on iOS uh, devices. But uh, it's, uh, again, you know, it's, it's uh, to me, worth it. Um, uh, it is $5, like I said, but if you're not going to be using that function much, uh, the, you know, creating videos with caption, then um, this might not be for you. But, uh, I, I, you know, I, I like it a lot uh, because it's uh, uh, it gives me the ability to add captions on the fly without me really trying that hard. And you'll see right now. So let's let's actually cut to the demo. Now, this app is actually very easy to use and it helps generate captions uh, for your video. It's great for Instagram and Snapchat stories, as well as travel blogs, tutorials, uh, and, and lifestyle blogs. It also supports over 30 languages. All I have to do is just tap the um, uh, flag up the very top. I have it set to English. And uh, all these languages are denoted by that country's uh, flag. Uh, so you just have to remember to speak in that language. And then the uh, app will uh, transcribe what you're saying and create captions. Now, down at the bottom, you have some tools. You can either do a square aspect ratio uh, or a full. I usually just go with full. Uh, there is an icon that allows you to switch between your front facing and your rear facing camera. I'm just going to leave it on selfie mode right now. Um, you can actually add effects as well if you want. If you want, um, let's see. Maybe uh, I'll do a black and white. Nice, classy. Uh, you can also select the type of uh, caption uh, design that you want. I usually like to keep it very simple, so I'm going to go with 
this pink. It's just, it's, it's elegant. Um, so once I do that, I'm ready to record. And I actually have something here that I can record. I'm just going to tap the record button and start speaking. Claypomatic is a video editor that turns everything you say into live captions. All you have to do is hit the magical record button, speak clearly, and your words will appear in a form of a stylish caption right on your recording. And hit stop. I just wanted to make sure that uh, all of the captions um, uh, appeared on the screen before I hit the stop, uh, or before I stopped the recording rather. Now here on this screen, um, you can actually trim your recording. Um, for right now, I'm just gonna leave it as is, but I'm gonna start playing it and you'll see captions. Now this is this app is not 100% perfect, so there might be some typos you might have to correct. If you do, all you have to do is just simply tap on the caption itself and it'll take you to the caption editor. So let's see. Diplomatic is misspelled. So what I'm going to do is tap on the uh, caption and it'll take me to the caption editor. And I'm going to spell it correctly. Perfect. And I can scroll to see if anything else is misspelled and I can correct it. At that point, it doesn't seem like everything is wrong. So great. So I'm gonna hit done at the top. And now All right, all right. And I do apologize for the bad audio in that clip. There was some uh, nasty feedback. Uh, I'm not sure how that happened. But um, in any case, that's Clipomatic. It's very easy to use. Um, again, you tap on the captions to modify them if there's a typo that you see, uh, which, I mean, you know, it's, it's, um, it's as accurate as it can be, uh, obviously, for the technology. But... Uh, um, it's not that hard to just edit certain things. In fact, uh, YouTube tends to generate captions automatically and sometimes it, it could get it wrong. So you have the ability to go in there and also um, uh, 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 edit the captions. There's other applications out there where captions are generated automatically, but uh, no system is 100% correct. Uh, even TV broadcast. Uh, you you get you get bad captions sometimes. Uh, so for for what it is, um, it's uh, I think it's a it's a great app uh, if you're looking to create videos that uh, generate uh, captions on the fly without you really having to do much uh, other than maybe editing the typos uh, that you get and that's pretty much it. Uh, but uh, it's super super convenient. Uh, but those are my five. Apps. Just to recap, we have Snapseed, uh, Spark Camera, Filmic Pro, Canva, and Clipomatic. Uh, some of these are just for iOS devices, um, others are for both iOS and um, uh, Android. But I do have to tell you, I do use an iPhone, so all these apps are uh, um, uh, iPhone approved. <laughs> Um, but that's it. I hope that you enjoyed this as much as I did. I love showing up the apps. If this helps you in any way, let me know in the comments. Uh, and uh, if you love this video, you know, please give it a thumbs up and click that notification bell so that uh, uh, you don't miss another um, uh, live stream or upload. Uh, so I'm going to be uh, actually going live again next week. What the theme will be, I don't know. We'll see. Um, I might even I might bring on a guest. Um, so we'll see what it is. It's a a, a surprise even for me. <laughs> so <laughs> all right. Well, everybody, thanks again for tuning in. Uh, have a, a great rest of your day. Until next time. In fact, have a great weekend too. I'll be back uh, next Tuesday. Uh, all right. See you later.